portion of MPLS. Don't give me the complicated stuff yet. Why? Because you're just going to confuse me if you do. Then, after I get that basic understanding, let's say IPv6 is, a, is another good example. So I'm going to get a basic understanding of IPv6. And like I said, I'm going to focus on what does it take for me to get a basic IPv6 network? Let's say if I wanted to have reachability from one end of the network to the other end of the network, you know, across Ethernet, across Frame Relay, across PPP, whatever, different type of interfaces and so forth for Frame Relay, what do I need to get that configuration? How do I do static routes? How do I do uh, like RIP, NG? How do I do OSPF V3? How do I mix the two? How do I do OSPF V3 and static routes and then redistribute the two? How do I get IPv6 across an IPv4 network? The simplest way. That's what I want to focus on. That's what I want to learn. So I try to get the basic understanding. Then what I do is I look at Cisco's implementation. So I may read like, let's say the ABCs of IPv6. I think that's on Cisco's website. Or I may read some you know basic low level Cisco press book at that time. Don't use the Cisco press book as step one. It's a mistake. You're going to make a mistake if you use the Cisco Pressbook at step one for learning the technology. You don't want to get a slant on the technology. You want to get a, a high level perspective, vendor independent, so that you have an understanding. Once you have that understanding, then you can go into Cisco's perspective. Okay, so you go into Cisco's perspective how they implement it. Step three. After you have you know built the basic IPv6 network and you're solid, man, you you can get in there and you know mix uh, RIPNG and OSPF E3. You can do route distribution. You know you can do static routes. You can create basic you know IP and IPv6 tunnels and so forth. There, it, you know, so you're solid with that. Now you move on to the advanced portions of IPv6. So now you go on to the advanced portion of IPv6 and focus on those advanced features. Because now when you're, when you're focusing on the advanced features, you're not stumbling on the basic features. You're not stumbling on, hey, I, I can't ping from one end of the network to the other end of the network. You know, it, so you're able to focus purely on you know, those advanced portions of IPv6 or of you know, MPLS, VPNs. So you know, that's the approach you want to take. Get the core down. Then gain that expert level. So then, okay, after I've got the core down, I'm going to look at you know what are some of the advanced topics in IPv6. What are some of the advanced topics in MPLS VPNs? And then I want to you know get a little bit of understanding of those. I may go look at a vendor independent approach. So a uh, vendor independent white paper uh, or, or a some sort of you know college level text on IPv6 or you know or MPLS VPNs. Then I'm going to go and get a hands-on experience with the complicated portions of the technology. But you can't skip step one and two. If you skip one and two, and that's where people make the mistake, you end up going back to the lab multiple times. So you definitely want to take this kind of structured approach here. You want to take this structured approach to learning. Learn the basics. You know, Practice the basics. Get the experience with troubleshooting and verifying the basic config. Then go ahead and move on to you know the advanced portions of the particular technology, and finally, you know you know get that hands-on experience. There's nothing that's going to substitute your hands-on experience in the CCI lab. I mean, you can go to as many classes as you want, you can read as many books as you want, but if you don't get that hands-on experience, you don't have a, a good shot at passing the CCI lab. All right, so CCI preparation review. So what sources are out there? Um, so what sources are out there for preparing for the CCI? The best source, let me bring up the pins here so I can mark on the board real quick. Okay, so the best source to prepare for the CCI lab, I would say is Cisco's website. Has to be Cisco's website. There's just no substitute for the documentation, the you know the tech tips, the you know the example tech tips are just the examples. Uh, you know you can't substitute what's available on Cisco's website. You know that is probably normally the best source. Now that being said, it's not always the best source. If you're doing the service provider CCIE, there's a lot of confusing stuff on Cisco's website about how things work. There's a lot of examples that just flat out don't work if you implement them. Maybe they were implemented in previous versions of the iOS. They leave them on the site. They don't tell you that this configuration doesn't work anymore. You know, and so that's what we ran into when we 
we're doing the SP, a CCIE, and at the same time writing the workbook, we had to try everything out. You try everything out to see how it works. You never take something for granted. You never take, because you saw Brian Dennis say this in a class, or you saw him post it on a mailing list or on a forum, you always practice it yourself. Okay, you always practice it. But I'll tell you what though, stuff that I post on mailing list or forums, I test out. I, I rarely ever post anything without testing it out real quick to be 100% sure. That's why you can't search group study and find the words, Brian Dennis, you're wrong. You know, you won't find that, okay? You just won't, if you search my 2,000 posts on group study for, for about seven years now, you won't find that. There is a couple posts I will say that I did say something incorrect that I went back and corrected later, but you won't see people say, hey, you are wrong, it doesn't work like this. It's not because I'm cocky or anything, it's because I tried it out and I show you the example usually in my post. All right, because, you know, I, I, that, and that's the way you gotta learn. I can't take for granted that, you know, the Cisco Pressbook says I can figure, you know, um, you know, I, I'm supposed to configure my T1, my, my PRI this way, or I'm supposed to figure call manager for this, or I'm supposed to configure DGP like this. I can't take it for granted. I got to try it out. I try everything out. Okay, and it's that hands-on preparation that's going to differentiate you from the person who has to take that lab multiple times. You know, you get that hands-on experience, you read the documentation CD, you know what's documented, you know how it's documented, you know what's available for you on CCO, you know, and, and that, that, those are really good resources because what's going to happen when you go to the real world, when you're at a client site and you need to configure something? Are you going to go, hey, you know, I got to run to Barnes & Noble and grab this Cisco press book real quick? You know, I, you know what you're going to do is you're going to hop on real quick to, you know, Cisco's website, possibly use, you know, Google to search. But you know, you're gonna to need to be able to find these resources as you go further in your networking career. Cisco's website is a really good one. There's a lot of people, I, I saw someone post recently on a forum, and it was actually a forum overseas, and the guy goes, he says, what am I gonna use a documentation CD for in the lab? I honestly was dumbfounded, I didn't know how to reply to that. You know, I honestly said, you know, there's, there's just no explanation, there's no way to reply to this question, you know, without, you know, making the guy feel, you know, without uh, you know making the guy feel dumb I should say so you know I just left that question alone but he's like you know what do I use the documentation for in the CCA lab you know it's it's either he's got a, a photographic memory and he can memorize the documentation or he's totally lost as what to expect in the CCA lab so the, the documentation CD is a really good resource when you got a couple hours to prepare for let's say I'm you know it's Thursday evening or Tuesday evening, whatever, and I got like an hour to prepare. Um, you know, my my uh, my spouse has stepped out for an hour, and she took the kids, or he took the kids, whatever. And you know, I got an hour to prepare. What am I going to do? I don't have enough time to do a full eight-hour lab. What I'll do is I'll go on the doc CD and I'll look up see if I can find auto install and maybe read about auto install. Okay, because from a CCA lab perspective, you know. Are they gonna expect you to be an expert with auto install? Mm, probably not. On a scale of one to 10, on a scale of one to 10, how knowledgeable will they expect you to be from an auto install perspective? More than likely, they're gonna expect you to be able to cut and paste the config from the doc CD and put it on the router and make it work. Okay, they're probably not gonna actually ask you to test it, but you know, you're gonna put a working config on the router. How, so why would they do that? Because somebody who's inexperienced with Cisco IOS will probably not know where to find it's documented, will probably never have heard about the feature.